Across Britain, there's a hidden network of canals, more than 2,000 miles long. Many of them cut through some of the most stunning scenery. And in this series, I've chosen eight canal trips, the very best, from the west coast of Scotland to the southwest of England. I'm going to take part, aren't I? <laughs> I'll be exploring their stories. Am I helping? Discovering why and how they were built. A spectacular piece of engineering. And looking at their impact as Britain moved into the industrial age. <laughs> On this trip, I'm exploring the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. It runs 127 miles, high over the Pennines, and was to give the textile industry of Leeds a direct route to the docks of Liverpool. I'll go through Sir Titus Salt's company town, come face to face with an alpaca, work the locks, and look at the landscape, towns and industries that have sprung up along the canal. I'll be meeting some of the people who live, work and play along its path. I'm starting in Leeds, where, in recent years, the waterfront has been transformed. This used to be a dingy backwater. Now it's an area Leeds is proud of. This canal took 40 years to build. It could have been completed much sooner. Money troubles got in the way, and we had to see off Napoleon at Waterloo. But these things happened, and in 1816, this great route across the Pennines was up and running. With the arrival of the canal, Leeds became one of the most important commercial centers in the country. Its success was largely based on the textile trade, and in the city centre, department stores opened to meet the demand for luxury goods. Just a short walk from the canal stands Leeds' impressive County Shopping Arcade, built in 1898. This was the place to get a suit, perfectly tailored, of course. Well, very nice to meet you, Pleasure James. Nice to meet you as well. And this is your emporium. Indeed. For your business, you want a bit of style, don't you? I do. When the canal was built, this was a, right. a modest woolen town, and it then became glorious because of textiles, didn't it? How did that work? Bradford wove the cloth, but Leeds was very much where the garments were made. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's names which you will have heard of, like Burton's. Yeah. When it was the demob years, when the soldiers came back, they called getting their suit the full Monty, and that was the three-piece. Oh, yes, the um, full Monty. That's, that's, where, it, that's yeah. where it came from. So you're going to show me your shot? I would love to. <laughs> OK, Absolutely. Right. Thanks very much. Just step inside James Mickleberg's shop, and you can walk back in time. In the Victorian age, a chap's tailor was likely to know more about him than his wife. Well, I would look at you and I would say you're around about a 42 chest. 42 some, chest, right? Something like a 42 chest. That's quite good, isn't it? And then I'd look at your jacket waist, and I think that might be around 42 as well. Um, 42? For think, the well, waist? Think, I'm solid. I am you solid. Are, you are solid. You are a 47 oh, chest. Oh, no. Hand, a hand on my heart, 47. 47? 47. 47. Right. And so your waist, it's obviously highly confidential, the measurements. You, that, you can whisper it to I, me. I think comfortably, that's probably 40. Look, I'm a Marks and Spencer 38. Anyway, I'm meant to be 38. <laughs> James, I'm afraid, got the measure of me. But I decided it didn't quite suit me, I mean. But whatever sort of garment you needed, Leeds catered for all, and textiles allowed the city to flourish. At the end of the 18th century, the number of mills increased sevenfold, and within 50 years, the population had trebled. Today, fashionable flats have taken over the old warehouses. The canal brought new thinking, encouraging trade in both directions. Yorkshire's industrialists could see immediately the advantages of bringing raw materials in and sending their textiles out. They developed an industrial corridor running across the Pennines, sighting their giant factories beside the canal. A Bradford wool magnate built one of the biggest, 25 miles outside Leeds. It was Saltaire, where 3,000 people worked 
for Sir Titus Salt. He remains a controversial figure. At a work's fate, he looked down on his employees patronizingly. I like to see you about me, to look upon your pleasant and cheerful faces. I hope you all enjoy yourselves and go home safely without accident after your day's pleasure. I wish happiness, health and prosperity to you all. But Sir Titus didn't just build a factory, he built a town by the canal to house his workers. But nowadays, should we look up to him or was he plain old-fashioned? 96-year-old Frank Senior grew up in one of the houses. How very nice to see you. Very nice to meet you. Yeah. He started work in the mill when he was 14. When Saltaire started and it was built up, everything was provided. Mm. So you had houses here, yeah. you had your work here. Mm. This was the company town, wasn't yeah. it? Good or bad? I still subscribe to the fact that he did a world of good. But there are others who point out that he had a captive workforce. Yes. And that seemed to rile a lot of people. You yes. either worked in the mill or, or you'd had it. Out. How much was it important that the canal should go right the way through the mill, as, as we can see here? Very important. How else could you transport bales of wool from Liverpool to the West Riding of Yorkshire? Oh. It was a lifeline. Yes. I used to watch barges arrive with several tons of coal. To watch two men unload that in one working day, Gosh. it was hard work. What sort of people were they? Just navvies. In the main, they were no different to any ordinary man in the street. So some of them were skinny, some of them were... That's right. Say what you like about those Victorian entrepreneurs, they certainly knew how to grasp an opportunity. The wool that came up the canal to Saltaire was not from Yorkshire. It was from South America. Saltaire was known for manufacturing clothes from alpaca wool. James Roberts is an alpaca farmer. His ancestors took over Saltaire not long after Sir Titus died. Now he returns to the bandstand built by Sir Titus to show us just how much wool you can get from these strange looking animals. Hello, James. Hello. Well, you brought your lovely alpacas, aren't they? They're fantastic, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they look just terrific, don't they? The whole wealth of Saltaire was based on alpaca wool. They were living in South America. That's right, they were <laughs> sheared over there and they actually just imported the wool. Um, obviously, it's great that nowadays we have them living here in the country. And how friendly are they? I wouldn't say that they're real sort of people animals. They're a little no. bit skittish and a bit shy, but, um, <laughs> but they don't mind being stroked. All right, OK, well, there we are. Whoops. Deciding to use alpaca wool was Salt's great breakthrough. At the time, this wool was mainly used as packing material in ships. He spotted that it could be made into quality clothing. Is that... <laughs> Is that saying thank you or what? <laughs> There's a lot here, isn't there? There's a lot. If I was getting a really stylish jacket, though, made of fur, yeah. how much could it cost well, from this amount of material? An anywhere from 300 to to £1,000. The sky's your limit. There we go. Oh, that's lovely. Looks a bit like Bambi now, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, that's lovely. You look really good, and I forgive you for that spitting <laughs> earlier. You know, honestly, anyone might want to spit at me. I quite understand that. Alpacas may not be man's best friend, but their wool made very good garments, which would be put onto the canal boats to head off to Liverpool. It may look peaceful now, but back then this would have been a busy highway for boats making their way to the Liverpool docks. But the Fowl Ridge Tunnel presented a problem. It was dug through such difficult rock that it would have been too expensive to construct a towpath for a horse. So once inside the tunnel, men had to lie on their backs and use their legs against the walls to leg the boat through. And once you were through the tunnel, you weren't even halfway to Liverpool. It was a tough life. Days were long and the work arduous. 
luckily for me, it's now a quiet spot to settle down for the night. I'm near Fowl Ridge in Lancashire, up in the Pennines, and I'm nearly halfway through the 127-mile journey from Leeds to Liverpool along the canal. You have to be sociable on a canal. It's time to make myself respectable and head out to meet the neighbours. Morning. 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 Right, so what sort of trip have you had? Oh, we've had a bit of a nightmare, actually. Picked a tyre up onto my prop. A tyre? A tyre, yeah. You got a little bit downhearted, <laughs> didn't you? A little well, bit. At one point, I never thought I'd get it off. David and Denny Schofield get underway, and I arrange to join up with them later to tackle the Barrow Ford locks. There are 44 locks carrying the canal high over the Pennines and linking the west riding of Yorkshire to the Mersey docks and from there out to the world. These locks at Barrow Ford are about 500 feet up, the highest point. We soon catch up with David and Denise, and it's time for a little light rivalry. Are you all right? OK. <laughs> Quite a snug fit, isn't it? It's a bit of a competition, isn't it, Denise? <laughs> you and me? Right, here we go. I'm ahead now. OK, I think I'm winning. <laughs> Crossing the Pennines proved difficult, and the canal took more than 40 years to build. But you can see why. It's Britain's longest single canal, and requires dozens of locks, eight aqueducts, a long embankment, and over one and a quarter miles of tunnel. Ahead of me again. I'm only, I was just a tiny bit behind. I'm going to win this time. No. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, how many more? This is it. The yeah, last this is one. It. Yeah. <laughs> Seven of these locks. What a business, isn't it? <laughs> God. But the canal over the Pennines was a great success with the coal, textile and cotton industries along its banks, it was one of the few canals that could compete with the railways. Cargo boats were still working here well into the 20th century. And there are still a few left today. This is a big one, isn't it? What are they doing? Now, that's more what they would have looked like in the old days. This is, that would have been a, a proper working barge coming down here, carrying coal, salt, grain, and those are the boats that would fly through the canals. They'd be worked 24 hours a day just so they could get quickly with their cargo where they had to be. They were called flyboats. Morning. Have you caught anything? Just a few roach. A few roach? Only small ones? Well, you've got quite a bit of the day left. We started in Leeds, we went through Saltair, Keithley, all industrial areas, and we're now coming into Burnley. But what's great about this canal is the way it's changing. It's not a question of the old industries, people putting up with a grim necessity of the canal. No, it's now part of the leisure industry. People are not looking away from the canal, putting up with it. They're looking towards the canal and enjoying it. It's terrific. That's a nice veranda you've got. Canals changed the map of Britain. They were the motorways of the age. Now it was easy to transport goods in bulk across the country. 
For the first time, towns like Burnley could become home to new industries. Sixteen miles later, I'm stopping at Blackburn at a canal-side factory where Ian Brown is acutely aware of the canal's importance. Right, so you've been on this site for ages, haven't you? Yeah, we're on both sides of the canal here. Uh, 1946, my grandfather, Harold and Henry, started the business. Well, what's nice is that you're making something of the canal. Absolutely. I mean, the canal is more than just a stretch of waterway. This symbolises here in Blackburn the Industrial Revolution. This is what put the great into Great Britain. We yeah. brought in raw materials, we made raw um, products, and we sold that to the rest of the world. Not everyone was made rich as a result. But there was more money to go round, and people started to spend on all sorts of things for the home, including wallpaper. Everybody could now brighten up their parlours. OK, well, it looks OK to me. It looks all right <laughs> to me, too. Because these big things, I mean, this would have been just the kind of thing you'd need a canal to go on, wouldn't you? I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. These are bulky items, both shipping in and shipping out, so traditionally they would have been moved on the canal. Right. But it stems from that amazing period after the Industrial Revolution, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. And the Industrial Revolution could only happen because of the canal. That's yeah. its greatest legacy. Yeah, and you're right alongside Absolutely. the canal. That's what, that's Absolutely. That's what's so nice. You could carry 30 tonnes of wallpaper on just one canal barge. All along this stretch, there were coal mines, cotton mills, foundries, and ironworks. It's the last leg of my journey which started in Leeds, a 40-mile run until I finally arrive in the docks of what became one of the greatest ports in the world. At Liverpool, huge ships waited, ready to carry Yorkshire's manufactured goods around the world. Danny O'Dear has been a skipper on the Liverpool docks for 25 years. Hello, Danny. Hi, John. And what's this great building? This is the tobacco warehouse. This is the largest brick warehouse in the world. So it's now derelict, but they're gonna, what are they going to turn it into? They're trying to de develop it so it looks something like this. Apartments. The waterfront now in, in Liverpool is just out of this world. It's fabulous. The city's yeah. changed now. I had my first job in Liverpool as a cub reporter on the Daily Post and Echo. And the waterfront didn't look like this. So we're going into, we're going into Albert Dock now. Albert Dock. Yeah, and I remember when it was gloomy and horrible. Dirty. For me, coming back here after 50 years, the smartening up of Liverpool's waterfront is quite remarkable. We take a lot of school children on board the boat now, primary school, and this is part of their curriculum about, yeah. you know, with the geography and the history and, the, you know, the waterways, the canals. It's amazing to think what this would have been like, say, a hundred years ago. Oh, you can only imagine with the tall ships, all the cutters all tied up alongside, unloading the cotton and all the stuff that came in from America. The city was helped in no small measure by the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. For more than 200 years, Liverpool was one of the greatest seaports in the world. And this is our canal, the Leeds and Liverpool Canal, coming down here into the city. Can you imagine all the goods coming from across the world into the port? And the exports, the cargoes, coming down the canal, and they can go anywhere. This book lists all the imports for one year, 1847, and much of it goes to the mills we've seen. There's lots of cotton and wool, and here, alpaca wool. We know where that's going to be spun, at Saltaire. 44,800 pounds. That's 20 tons in just one day, January the 28th, 1847. That's really good. OK, right, off we go. There isn't much trade carried on the canal today. But the restored waterfront itself makes for a good day out on a boat. Good enough for the annual outing of the local Women's Institute. 
Right, hello. Hello, sir. Right, so what's the main thing I've got to know? We're all fabulous. Yeah. We all come from the WI. Yes. A mixture of ages. Right. But not um, the stereotypical WI women. Uh, Does that mean I have to make jam? No. no. Keep your hat on, John. No, no, no. <laughs> Does that fill you with pride, that view? Yeah. 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 It's a part of history, you know. We've had all wonderful ships and cruise liners that have sailed from here, been all around the world. All our history really stemmed from the sea. We were always taken to the river, taken on trips across the river. It was part of our heritage, yeah. our youth. I think it was just a natural progression that they had to, to find another use for the canal. Yeah. Because each age, it's changed, isn't it? What they, they've used it for, it was all about trade and yeah. transportation. Whereas now, it's about enjoyment. In the 1960s, the cargo trade ceased on the Leeds-Liverpool Canal. I started work here as a reporter, and a local band were making their name in the world. Now, 50 years on, and Liverpool is rocking again. And the canal, which helped transform the city's fortunes, is flourishing once more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 It's been a great experience. And for me, you could say, it's taken me right back to where I started.